our most gracious God and loving Father in heaven. Yes. Once again, we humble ourselves unto thee. We give our many thanksgiving unto you, O oh dear Father, for all the loving kindness that you have given unto us. We thank thee for our borrowed life and strength. And most of all, O oh dear Father, you have given us once more this wonderful opportunity to be gathered in this place for us to give glory to thy most holy name. Amen. We haven't been so good to you, oh dear Father. Yes. We know we didn't we made mistakes in our life. Yes. We sometimes forsake your will and commandments. Yes. That's why at this very moment, oh dear Father. Please cleanse our hearts and our mind. Make us worthy in calling upon thy most holy name. We remember our friends and our loved ones. Some of them are not with us anymore, oh dear God. May you kindly please let them be with us also, oh dear Father, so that every time we gathered like this, all of us, can give glory to thy most holy name. Amen. Here with us is our brother whom you entrust to expound your will and commandments. Yes. May you kindly please be unto him, O oh dear Father. Give him the knowledge and the wisdom that he needs, yes. that he may always do his part worthy before thy holy sight. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. Please continue to mediate our prayers to the Father. And please, may you see each one of us fulfilling our duties and responsibilities. And may you see the love of the brotherhood inside this church so that we can all be worthy before the sight of the Father and your sight. Our God, we firmly believe that you heard our pleadings and you will be with us throughout the course of this worship service. We humbly beg everything in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. and sisters, we should all give thanks and glory to our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, not only for the continued life and strength that is given unto each and every one of us, but most especially the faith that has been entrusted in our hearts in order for us to continue with our services unto Him, despite the situation that we are in, despite the things that happened in our life, we know that it is our divine duty to give glory to our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we know, brothers and sisters, that the church has undergone a tremendous trial. And because of this trial, there were those who passed and there were those who failed. Now for those who passed and continued to give praises to our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, it is very important for each and every one of us to fully understand that in order for us to be able to sustain our calling, 
our election as being true members of the Church of Christ, we should never rely on our own knowledge, our own skills, our own know-how. That is why it is important for each and every one of us to revert back to the basics. During the time of Brother Ranyo G. Manalo, when the church was administered with the teachings of our Lord God and pristine doctrines inside the church, he was able to ensure that the church will be fully guided by the Holy Spirit in terms of the doctrines, in terms of the regulations that were always based on the Bible. That is why we would just only revert back to those teachings, those regulations, so that whatever we're doing right now in this stage that is unprecedented in the history of the church, we know that we are not doing things on our own accord, but based on what the Bible says. So during the time of Brother Ryan G. Manalo, he made sure that the elders, the members of the Church of Christ will be administered by the teachings written in the Bible. Now, what is the proper way of taking care of each and every one, the members of the true Church of Christ that belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ? Please listen here as we read what is written here in Acts 20:28. 20, this is what we can read. Take heed, therefore, to yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers to feed the church of Christ, which he has purchased with his blood. Now, is this verse familiar to you, Brother Dan? It is. It is very familiar to each and every one of us. I don't know how many times we have heard this verse over and over again through the course of our life inside the church. But the Holy Spirit will always inspire us to fully understand the meaning of such verses by allowing us to understand what it means in our life at a certain point, at a certain time, certain place, or certain events in our lives. So how should we fully understand the verse that we have read? According to Apostle Paul, here in this verse, brothers and sisters, Apostle Paul was talking to the elders of the Church of Christ in Miletus. Now, who are the elders? Those are the people who were entrusted to take care of the Church of Christ. During our time, brothers and sisters, who are the elders? Who are the elders? What are that? Those are the officers. Especially in our time, the elders could also be considered those who are the heads of the family. Why? Because we are all entrusted by the Holy Spirit that appointed us to feed the church of Christ, which he has purchased with his blood. So for those who were appointed as overseers, what is one of the uh, fundamental duty? To feed. Now, when we hear the, the word feed, what is that usually equate to? What do you feed, people? Food. What is food to our bodies? Nourishment. It gives us life. It gives us health. So in a spiritual meaning of the word feed, we are also feeding spiritual nourishment to our souls, to our, to our faith. So who were entrusted with this duty? The overseers. Now, brothers and sisters, as you have heard, it is those who are considered overseers are appointed by the Holy Spirit. Meaning, if somebody were to come forward and say, I want to be a head deacon. I want to be this officer. That's good that he has that willingness to have that function. But is it enough to just want? Are you the one who will be the one to say that you are this? It is appointed by whom? The Holy Spirit. That, is, that should be our faith, brothers and sisters. 
all of the things that we are doing for as long as it is, as it is in accordance to the will of our Lord God, it will be the Holy Spirit that will appoint each and every one of us. So those who are entrusted with this duty, what does Apostle Paul say? He said, take heed. Brother Alan, what, is, what does take heed mean? Take heed, shoulder, knees, and toes. No, take heed. That's right, Brother Alan. Take heed means to listen. So to each and every one of us, Apostle Paul said, listen. We should listen. So what should we listen to in terms of feeding the church of Christ, in terms of being overseers? How does our Lord Jesus Christ teach the proper way of feeding or taking care of the members of the church of Christ? Let's listen here in John chapter 6 and the verses 39. And it is the will of him who sent me that I should not lose any of, of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them all to life on the last day. How did our Lord Jesus Christ teach the proper way of taking care? of the true members of the Church of Christ, according to our Lord Jesus Christ, it is the will of Him who sent me. Who sent our Lord Jesus Christ? Our Lord God. Therefore, what our Lord Jesus Christ is teaching is not His own, but the will of our Lord God. What was the will of our Lord God? That all, that I should not lose any of all He has given me. So there were those who were given to our Lord Jesus Christ to what? Take care. What is the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ? Not to lose any of them that God has given unto him. And that on the last day, which is the last day, judgment day, all of them should rise. All of them will be saved. So what should be our understanding of the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ? Those who will remain, those who will be faithful, are the ones that were truly given by our, our Lord God. So let us all understand, brothers and sisters, that not everyone, no matter how we want it, not everyone that will be given to our Lord Jesus Christ will remain to be with our Lord Jesus Christ. Because there are those who probably were there in the beginning, but no longer in the end. But for as long as you are of our Lord God, and our Lord God sees something in our heart, then our Lord Jesus Christ teaches that we should make sure that none of them will ever fail. What if in spite of the care, and concern of each and every one of us and our Lord Jesus Christ, those who are under his care, one of them would still end up being lost or astray. Please listen here in Matthew chapter 18, verses 12 up to 13. 13. What do you think if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray? Does he, does he not leave the 99 and go to the mountains to seek the one that is straying, and if he should find it, assuredly I say to you, he rejoices more over that sheep that, than over the 99 that did not go astray. How did our Lord Jesus Christ value each and every one that was given under his care? According to the verse that we have read, if a man has a hundred sheep, one of them goes astray. What should be the responsibility of the one taking care of the flock. Just to leave it, just, just, that's just one. I have 99 more. I should just go on with my way. Is that the right thing to do? No. Our Lord Jesus Christ teaches us we should leave the 99, go to that one so that he may be led back from being astray. Can we see the value of that one? in the sight of our Lord Jesus Christ. That should also be how 
we value each and every one of us. There are those who would be led astray. There would, there would be those who would probably not see the value of the things that we are doing in the sight of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we should not lose faith in them. But all the more, do what our Lord Jesus Christ did and seek for that one that has been led astray so that he may continue in the right path of righteousness. Now, how can each and every one of us help those who are under our care? Like, for example, our loved ones, our family, our friends, whom we know have the faith in giving praises to our Lord God. How should we take care of them? How should we value them? Please listen here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and the verse is 14. Dear brothers, warn those who are lazy, comfort those who are frightened, take tender care of those who are weak, and be patient with everyone. This is the kind of attributes that should be seen in each and every one of us. That is why, according to Apostle Paul, dear brothers, warn those who are lazy. Because there will be those who are lazy. Brother, Brother Nelson, you've been a head deacon. You have encountered so many people, right? And with the congregation, have you, have you experienced different kinds of personalities in the brethren? Yes, you have. Do you have one approach to every kind of brethren? you have different approach for this kind of brethren, this kind of brethren is uh, a bit sensitive, this kind of brethren is, is hard-headed. So you adjust the way you accord yourself to them because of the different traits that they have. According to the Bible, there were those who would be lazy, you should warn them. There would be those who are frightened, what should we do? Comfort them. Not when a person is frightened, the more you would like to frighten him. You would like to comfort them. How about those who are weak? Take tender care of them. You know, it's not just take care of them. Take tender care of them. And according to the verse, let us all be patient with everyone. There are mothers here, right? You have kids. And growing up, you know your kids to be hard-headed. Sometimes they're um, a bit finicky. They have their different uh, attitudes. But you have always been patient with your children. I'm looking at Tito Tell. He's thinking, until now, I have to be patient. <laughs> but you know, these are the things that are inherent in each and every one of us. We're just applying this to the way the Bible teaches us in order for us to take care of those who needs take, uh, being taken care of. What else should be done to those brethren who have grown weak or who have been frightened or those who have other problems in their faith? Let's listen here also again in Acts 20.35. I have shown you in every way by laboring like this, that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. According to Apostle Paul, you must support the weak. Therefore, we should neither feel annoyed nor tired of taking care of those who have grown weak in their faith. Instead, we should help them regain the strength and zeal in serving our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what should not be done by those who have been entrusted to take care of the brethren? If these are the things that we should do, there are also some things that we should remember not to do. Please listen here in Acts 20.20. 20. I did not keep from declaring what was beneficial to you and teaching you publicly and from house to house. What are the things that we should not do? We should not hold back. We should not keep from declaring what is beneficial to our brethren. Meaning, if you see that your brethren is being lazy, would you just allow him to be like that? And you know that if he continues to be like that, it will be detrimental 
to his faith. All the more that we should not keep ourselves from helping them. We should not hesitate. We should not keep from doing what is right. Why? Because it is our divine duty. Being two Christians, being true Christians, brothers and sisters, we should follow what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for his church. It is hard. That's true. Because our Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who was not able to commit sin. That's why we're disciples. We mirror, we mimic, we try to follow the life of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we may also be worthy in the sight of our Lord God come judgment day. Now, how should those who are entrusted to take care of the brethren, of their loved ones, of their friends who are also in the faith, in the church, how do we speak to them as our brethren? Let's listen to the pronouncement of Apostle Paul here in Colossians chapter 4 and the verse is 6. Let your conversation be gracious as well as sensible, for then you will have the right answer for everyone. How should we speak to the brethren? Let our conversations be what? Gracious and sensible. So don't allow yourself to be, when you talk to other people, just gracious. You're always gracious. But the question is, are you sensible? Other people might fall into thinking, but I'm sensible. But when you talk, you're not gracious. For example, if Sister Lin, if somebody were to talk to you, he's, prob he's probably saying the right thing, but he's not talking to you graciously. Would you receive that positively? No. So sometimes even if the intention is good, but the, the, the way that they're doing it is not good, you are not receiving it. You're not accepting it. That is why the Bible teaches us the right formula in doing things. When you talk, especially if you're giving advices, make sure that you are gracious and make sure that you are sensible. Now, why should our speech, why should the way we talk to others always be with grace? What should be the result of our conversations with our brethren? Here in Ephesians chapter 4 and the verse is 29, this is the pronouncement of Apostle Paul. Don't use bad language. Say only what is good and helpful to those you are talking to and what will give them a blessing. Therefore, the things that we should always remember in giving advices or talking to our brethren is that the things that we are telling them or sharing to them should give them what? Blessings. We should encourage them. In our group, and also there in those who are joining us. We have different groups. And somehow by now, we know each other. Some of you even know each other way, way before. Decades. So you know what is good for your brethren. You should not keep from doing what is good for them. But always remember the things that we are telling them should be helpful to them should give them a blessing. Well, what should a true member of the Church of Christ do if he finds his brother or his sister that is already transgressing the will of our Lord God? Because let us all remember, we are all human, prone to mistakes. What if we realize that somebody is committing a sin in the sight of our Lord God? Please listen here in Galatians Chapter 6 and the verse is 1. Dear brothers, if a Christian is overcome by sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help him back onto the right path, remembering that the next time it might be one of you who is in the wrong. When we see somebody who is erring, somebody who is committing a mistake, what should we do? We should advise them. To do what is right. To, to go away from committing sin. But we should always remember in doing that, 
that we should be careful. Why? Because we might fall into being judgmental. Do you know what judgmental is? When you start judging other people. When you start judging other people, you are already elevating yourself to what? Higher or lower? Higher than the person you are judging. What is the common saying, Brother Dan? Don't judge a book if you're not a judge. <laughs> don't, don't judge a book by its cover. Because we don't know what that person is going through. We will do everything that we can to understand. But in helping others to do what is right, we should also understand that maybe, maybe next time it would be us in that same spot committing the same mistake. Then what would you say to yourself? When I was talking to these brethren, I was so harsh because I was thinking, you know, you're wrong, you're erring, that's bad as if I'm not prone to commit the same mistake. And if that happens, then I don't know what will I say to myself. Because each and every one of us is prone to the same mistake. So when we talk to our brethren, we should talk to them with full compassion and understanding. Because none of us is perfect. If we start to talk like a Lord, and when we talk to other people, it's we're like we're putting them down. Being judgmental, that is no longer good. That is not how our Lord Jesus Christ taught his disciples, his apostles. That's not how the true administrator of the church proceeded in taking care of the flock. That's why it has grown and has been established in the sight of our Lord God. Now, what spirit should guide each and every one of us, so that we should be able to bring back our erring brethren back to our Lord God. Please listen here in Hebrews 5 and the, the verses 2. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weakness. What should be the spirit to guide us? We are all subject to the same weakness. That is why, with all compassion, we should take care of those who are ignorant and going astray. Now, why should a church member or a true member of, our, of the Church of Christ correct their wayward brethren with gentleness and compassion? Why not just ridicule the person, mock the person, or call him out in his face? Why do we have to do it with compassion? Why do we have to do it so gently? Please listen here in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and the verses 24 up to 25. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone, be able to teach and be patient with difficult people, gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts and they will learn the truth. How should we correct our wayward brethren? With compassion. Why with compassion? Because a servant of the Lord must not quarrel. We should not, what, we should not quarrel with our brethren and we should be kind to whom? Every one. Every one. We should not select, I'm going to be kind to this person. I'm going to, I'm going to be mean with them. I'm going to... We should be kind with everyone. We should be able to teach and be patient even with difficult people. All the more with difficult people. Are there times when we should rebuke or sharp, sharply um, correct our brethren? Or should we always be timid or compassionate or gentle? There are also times that it is taught by the Bible. Please listen here in Titus. Chapter 1, the verses 10 up to 11 and 13. For there are many insubordinate, both idle talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouth must be stopped, 
who subvert the whole household, teaching things which they ought not for the sake of dishonest gain. This testimony is true, therefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in faith. Now, in another translation, this is what we can read. For there are many rebellious people who engage in useless talk and deceive others. This is especially true of those who insist on circumcision for salvation. They must be silenced because they are turning whole families away from the truth by their false teaching and they do it only for money. So that is why, brothers and sisters, in order for us to fully understand how it is to take care of our brethren. Because we are now congregating. We have our brethren with us. So we should also be guided by the same spirit, the same guidance as those of old, relying on things that were written in the Bible, taught by our Lord Jesus Christ, in order for us to follow. We will never rely on our own understanding or our, our own teaching. So that is why, brothers and sisters, if there are those who are using useless talk, they are engaging in gossip, we should rebuke them sharply. There are those who would be deceiving other people. How do you deceive other people? When, when the things that you tell them are what? Lies. They can be truth, but not the whole truth in that way they are deceiving other people and we should not do that brothers and sisters so according to the verse that we have read we should all have the same heart as our Lord Jesus Christ I see each and every one of us and there are those who are with us in different places in different countries we should all be guided with the same spirit. This is the pioneering stage of our time. That is why we're doing things right the first time. In order for us not to be led astray. There would be those among us. Those, there would be those who would be joining us. Who would probably be engaging in useless talk or deceiving others. Let us correct them. And if there are those who are falling short in terms of giving praises to our Lord God, in terms of our services unto our Lord God, then we should all remind them gently. You know, each and every one of us has an assignment now. What is that? To seek those who have been, been led astray. Let us always remember, let us follow our Lord Jesus Christ. It is our hope that all of them, especially our loved ones, our friends, will be also called by our Lord God because they have received the faith already. Some of them probably are still in the institution thinking that it is their way of salvation. We respect each and everyone's decision or opinion. And it is our faith that we should share it with them. Now, we will do what we can in order for them to go back to the fold in giving service our, to our Lord God. We will talk to them gently, with compassion and understanding. But if it is not in accordance to the will of our Lord God, is there anything else we can do? No. Because it is our Lord God who will be the one to call them. But let our Lord God use us as his instrument. This is instrument. So imagine if you are being used as an instrument and you're talking to somebody whom you are inviting to worship our Lord God. And instead of giving, sharing the good news, what are you sharing? Different news, bad news, wrong news. Would that encourage our brethren? No. Would that strengthen them? No. Would that uphold them? No. So let us follow the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Allow ourselves to be his instrument in propagating the words of our Lord God in order for us to give glory to our Lord God. We are all 
very fortunate, brothers and sisters, that we have been enlightened. We are fortunate because we have our loved, un loved ones with us. There are still others out there. And let us continue to pray that they will join us someday so that all of us will be together in giving praises to our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Let that be our prayer. Let us all stand and we shall pray. Our Lord God in heaven, thank you so much, O God, for your words and your understanding for each and every one of us because we know we have many faults. We have many iniquities before your sight. Yes. And by ourselves, Father, we know that we have never been worthy before you. But because of your love, because of your mercy and your compassion, yes. you have shown us the right path and allowed us to stand up on the side of your righteousness. Amen. Father in heaven, please continue to uphold each and every one of us. Yes. Let us be the manifestation of your small remnant yes. so that, Father, come judgment day, we are assured of the salvation that you have promised us. Amen. Father in heaven, please look down on each and every one of your children. Yes. Look at our family, Father. Yes. You know each and every one of us. You know our history. You know the time that we were born, the things that we have done, the things that we have encountered in life. And Father, you alone know the contents of our heart. That is why, Father, we continue to seek your mercy. We continue to beg of you, Father, please continue to use us as your instrument, instrument of your will, so that more and more people will be enlightened, more and more people will be strengthened, and all of us will be, be giving glory to your holy name. Amen. May you bless each and every one of this household. Yeah. May you look and scatter this, the blessings to each and every one of us. Please allow us to receive the forgiveness of our sins. Yes. Please allow us to be guided by your Holy Spirit. Yes. So that, Father, in everything that we do in service unto you, may be able to give glory to your holy name. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much. Because of you, the Father listens to our supplications. Yes. He continues to forgive us of the many sins that we have committed. And we will be assured of salvation come judgment day. Amen. Our Lord God in heaven, we continue to pray for those who are oppressed, those who are continuously persecuted. Father, please continue to guide each and every one of us. Amen. Give us the hope that we need because it is the fundamental teachings that we uphold, Father, the things that we hold dear in our life. And we know for as long as we follow your teachings and your commandments, for as long as we have that faith in our heart, none of the things in this world can ever harm us. Amen. Father in heaven, may you bless our children, bless our loved ones. Yes. Father, please continue to uphold us. Embrace us with your loving hands yes. so that, Father, we know that as we continue to sojourn in this world, we will always be with you and you with us. For all of these things, we... Ask and beg in the name of our Lord Christ Jesus. Amen.